Hi, right, welcome to another episode of Out of Stand Nation. We got myself, Nick, and Aura. We fell out of stand. So, here we go. Uh, let's, we get started with this first first piece of our lineup. MCND <laughs> is back. Oh my god. We are back with Spring. Uh, taking us into Spring. So, Right? Uh, it, it came, it's so soon, too. I know. It came out at the right time. But, I mean, like... It that, really did. It's like... They, they had they've had a release in it. they had a pre debut in January, then they Which had their actual debut, and then now they got this like bro, this is awesome like they they just barely yeah. finished uh, with their promotions for uh, their debut so right this also really drives home the point of I think this is going to be a regular thing for a lot of gen like as we shift into Gen Four mm -hmm. like gen, as Gen Four actually becomes a thing mm -hmm. is you're going to see debuts have a like. A mini album or a single album and then at you'll see a month later they come back and yep. it's just gonna be a digital single comeback you know mm -hmm. yeah because I, I, I believe this is also a digital single okay well cause... yeah and when oh. when you do the, the physical album um they'll, wrap, they'll package all of these up together and to right so well no i mean not all the with... time but so far that, I... that's what it looks like it's been happening yeah i'm not sure if spring is on the original album okay um, I'd have to check the over it, there, but or when they do like a repackage album, yeah, because like yeah, when they do a repackage, it will definitely be on there because they do it all, they do that all the time. So, um, these are these aggressive debuts and, and uh, comebacks, like we've seen this established too with like Bandit uh, from last year, right? Definitely. Um, signature, well, the signature is kind of like a, a weird thing too, where it's like you have like two lead uh, singles, so mm -hmm. um, which we'll yeah. talk about that later too. We will, <clears throat> absolutely. So yeah, I mean, as far as like from, from smaller companies, I think this is a great way to go about it. Um, you know, you, 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 it kind of it kind of shows like you know the people like hey, you know, this is a group. They're here to stay. Their company is serious while supporting yeah. these guys and aggressively pushing them. Right. Um, yeah, because Itzy and Everglow didn't do that, right? No, they didn't. They, they had just debut and then regular comebacks. Yep. I which uh, what's up? I think Itzy had a. It started with a digital, but then the second comeback was a physical. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, they did, they did have a physical, but it was a very limited print. I think they had like what seven albums for the very, like seven physical albums uh, for the first one, and then it went to like a uh, giveaway or something like that. Yeah, I know that so, there was a giveaway for an LT album through like Superstar, or what JYP or yeah. whatever. They're like extremely rare. Oh so. yeah. <clears throat> so. Let's get to talking about the actual song and music video itself. Um, Nick, we pretty much had like a lot of the same uh, feelings on the uh, on the song itself. So we could kind of just like lead us into a bit. Yeah. So in uh, in Pentagon's recent comeback, I'm just joking. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> so. The reason I made that joke is this song is very similar to something you'd hear come out of Pentagon. Mm -hmm. It is very kind of almost like a carefree kind of concept. Mm -hmm. And honestly, like, I think they did this very well. It's normally it's really hard to integrate the amount of rap they did into a kind of like a carefree kind of song because rap is obviously a more hard style. Yes. Right. <clears throat> but I think they did it really well, honestly. Um, oh, yeah. They going with a lighter rap and especially with uh, the, the lighter. Um, the lighter voice types mm -hmm. really made it like transition really well between chorus and verse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, especially so it makes sense because with rap being their 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 centerpiece for this group and this mm -hmm. type of song, um, their rap delivery really carried the song because musically it wasn't very complex. No, as far as like the musical right. accompaniment. Yeah, right. It was it was rather. Um, for lack of a better word, plain. Mm -hmm. um, there's really no better word to really describe it. I mean, it was, it was basic in in a sense. Yeah. You know? It, but it didn't need to be complex. Right. Yeah, because there the, wasn't the complexity was was there from there from the various members and the different rap deliveries. Right. So that's where the complexity comes in. It, it, it almost felt like uh, the pre debut song, to, at least in my opinion. Oh man, uh, yeah. T.O.P. Gang. It wasn't very complex, but it was still hard hitting, and it was enjoyable. It was yeah, I love it. It was that. fun. We, it was very yeah. fun. So, 
I feel, I definitely feel like this song. <clears throat> so the, obviously the group right now is working on establishing their own style, mm -hmm. you know, defining what MC and D style is. Mm -hmm. I feel like they're taking this in, in a good direction. I feel like Ice Age was a bit of a different direction, kind of testing the waters. Right. What m multiple paths they had, because Ice Age was more, Ice Age was more chanty rather than actual vocal based. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, going for a a similar vibe to um kind of like a hybrid like a tease and stray kids you know yeah yeah but i think with this running more like <clears throat> vocal heavy chorus rap based verses i think this is more of what their style is going to be when we as we go down the road with them in the future and i'm already sold oh yeah uh, i i i think that going I mean, they could also go with a dual kind of thing where they switch concepts back and forth. Um, I can. That's very true. Or I, I, yeah. I could definitely see that. Um, and if they do go that route, it, j that's just as great for people who like the Ice Age kind of style, or for those who yep. like this spring slash uh, TOP game kind of style. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, they could very well. Um, like you said, go with the dual concept, or they could just run a full versatility concept. Yeah. You know, when you have the amount of distribution that they have inside of like all the members, pretty much being able to rap and sing. You know, you you run a great mix because you know, if this song, for example, might call for that, like this song called for heavy rap. Mm -hmm. The next song you could do could be almost fully vocal. You could almost do a ballad. Yeah. 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 Um, oh yeah. It was actually like a, um. With like H and D's unfamiliar, something along those lines. Yeah. Yep. Um, but uh, uh, I mean, this song definitely plays into their youth as well. Um, mm -hmm. they all, we, we all know that they're fairly young. Uh, I don't think they're even in their twenties yet, are they? They may have one in his twenties. Like, Maybe like, one or two. Just, like, I, d I haven't learned the members yet. Neither, neither have I. Uh, so if you're an MC and D fan. Uh, I'm sorry, we don't know their ages. <laughs> uh, we'll work on it. They'll work and, on uh, it. Uh, and, uh, I, I, know, I already have with, a hard enough as, time with the, all the groups I follow, okay? Yeah, especially with as much as I love this group too, like, you would think that I've already known all the names and, and, and whatnot. Like, I'm so embarrassed for myself to not, that I haven't gotten that part yet. <laughs> like, I, I'm so behind, so, yeah, I'm sorry. Like, I, I really need to get to know more about, like, the members of this group for as much as I yeah, promote them. So. Um, the uh, visuals, like this music video, uh, I definitely, like, what, what was the very first thing I said? Like, oh, I feel like I'm, I'm watching uh, a bit of Pentagon here. Like, yeah. He's reminding me of uh, uh, Hump from last year. You know, it was set in a um, kind of like this like a school setting and, and their attire. Okay. It, but it was like the, and the bright colors, it was, it was very fun. Um, I, loved, I loved all of that. The, their choreography. And their, their dance skills. I noticed that as well. They are so good at dancing this early on. Right? Mm -hmm. Very sharp, um, hard hard movements, um, powerful movements. Maybe not to like the same, uh, I would say, power as like you would say from the straight kids, but their sharpness. Right. Mm -hmm. I think what yep. their, their, their trademark is their, the sharpness of their of their uh, moves. They, they def yeah. You can definitely see that they put in a lot of work to become amazing <clears throat> dancers. Um, mm -hmm. I will, I'm going to give credit to the members and whoever's been teaching them how to dance because whoever's teaching them how to dance has done an amazing job. Oh yeah. And I mean, it, in the comebacks from, for example, Uptension, right? Mm -hmm. We can see a little bit of this. Right. You know, I wouldn't even be surprised to say that they, if they shared a dance teacher or if they shared a couple of the same dance teachers because usually there's more than one. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, because the styles are similar mm -hmm. but i don't think they share a full um like a full staff right right because the dance styles that they that they do in mcd like you said were more sharp and more kind of focused on the 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 smaller aspects uh -huh. mm -hmm. whereas obtention they're more focused on the speed they're more focused on being quick and getting to where you need to be because obviously in obtention there's a lot of members you have to work around yeah um and the last thing you want is two people colliding on stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah, that that's, that reminds me of like God Seven because God Seven is also really good at um, their transitions between between uh, sets of, of their choreography. Right. Like, mm -hmm. You see members like running 
from what from like one corner to the center like dude's like taking off full sprint running because he has to get there like because their choreography is going so fast yep and with smaller groups such as like you know mc and d where they're five ace where they're five stuff like that you can focus a little more on the smaller aspects because there's more room to work with and there's less people mm -hmm. yeah it's less um, crowded on the stage there's chances of yeah collision. like if you guys have seen so they're kind of an anomaly but if you if you've watched 17 dance 17 is kind of an anomaly because they can focus on the smaller aspects they can do all of that still may remain perfectly synced and still be able to focus on where they even though they need to get around 12 other people to get to where they need to be they still somehow do it right yeah so um another, another thing to go with their dancing and the karaoke your stage presence these guys have the kind of the same kind of stage presence that you would expect out of a veteran group that's been debut for five years they have a very large stage presence for you know a rookie group they're, they're confident they've got that confidence that's what that's they're very confident. um i wouldn't say as long as five years maybe a year or two um i mean when you compare it to some of these other like uh, maybe not like the the lot the the bigger more established uh, five-year groups oh yeah like the yeah but like but, they are definitely like yeah more more they're they definitely have the confidence oh yeah they they've got the confidence um so uh, yeah they they definitely show at least show confidence um i haven't seen any of the dance performances uh, I don't think they have any, do they? They do. They do. They definitely do. Okay. They've been making the rounds. Okay. Well, I'm talking about for spring. Um, oh, for spring? Okay. Yeah. yeah no, I haven't checked it out yet. Yeah. So. Um, I don't know if they have it for spring. I mean, I'd, I'd love to see the stage, their the presence for the stage for spring. I but, mean, if, you know. if it's anything like, uh, like their previous, because uh, I remember I was already blown away with the... Um, the TOP gang with their stage performances, right. like they did, they did very well on those. Right. So I, I would not expect you know any less mm -hmm. with Spring. Okay, yeah, this makes a lot of sense. Okay, so I, I, while you guys were talking, I did a little bit of research. Of course you did, as I do. Um, four of the members, it seems. Hi, dog. The classic. He's back. <laughs> so it seems four of the members learned dancing in America. In 2016. Oh. Okay. Um. As w as well, it seems one, maybe two, but one of the members at least knows Taekwondo. Okay. So he has the ability to make quick, fast movements. Yeah. And make them sharp. Um. And two of the members as well performed on the fan. Okay. Also, awesome. that's where they that's where they would get a little bit of their stage presence kind of experience. Okay. Yeah. But. A lot of their a lot of their stage presence as well is um a lot of their a lot of their stage presence comes from their dancing in America. Yeah. Because one thing that American dancers are really, really good at is getting the using up the entirety of the stage. Using up the entirety of the stage and especially if the if if it was uh street dancing, if they were if they were oh, doing yeah. street dancing as well. Because part of street dancing, right, isn't just your movements and whatnot, it's your presentation, right? Is that showing off your, your self confidence. You're, you're trying to make you're trying to you know get that big <clears throat> energy and then you know that, that big mm like sh energy. Show, you're, you're, sh you're showing up that other guy like right. you're, you're trying yeah, to make yeah. yourself so big that you're making that other guy feel small and make them lose that confidence on the stage so you, you can you know win, win on the streets like and it looks like a lot of their songs are going to be composed by their leader oh wow apparently their their leader composed a song for under 19. okay okay um, and he showed uh, snippets of other songs he's composed, and they were all pretty good. He's remixed most of the tracks they danced to in their like pre debut. Nice. So it looks like it's going to be similar to like kind of like a Stray Kids scenario where where Chan composes uh, a lot of their own music. Okay. I absolutely love that. You know, I, I love I love seeing that uh, that we're seeing more and more uh, members of these groups having mm -hmm. you know a hand in in the composition. Uh, of their own songs so yeah i definitely feel like it gives a little bit more depth to the group you know right. but not saying that like groups are sh like shallow if you don't produce your own music that's right. just how k-pop right. is but i feel like the songs are a little more personal as a fan in that yes 
kind of um in that kind of sense yeah. i feel like they're I'm definitely able to connect more to the music yeah yeah that is produced it also gives them more street cred because if you remember um a lot of a lot of the smack talk about like bts right from like newscasters in america who don't really know much of anything about bts they're like oh they're just a produced group you know you know, they're just made by by a bunch of uh, seats in the in the room. Like, no, BTS does a lot of their own music. Well, well I, I feel like that that's yeah. a lot of people who generalize K-pop too. Um, who exactly. Get, who don't that who don't under, that is what I'd yeah, say. Yeah, it, it's I wouldn't say it's just newscasters or whatever. Just because there are always some that do actually do their best well, to I, give. Credit. I was using those newscasters as a as an yeah. example. Yeah, like that's what I'm talking about. Like, yeah, there's a lot of people who will generalize K-pop as like. Oh, it's produced by a bunch of people, uh, you know, old yeah. guys in suits. Right, in room. right. So, um, yep. You know, get that street cred, but, get that, put that person, you know, more personalness uh, in their music for their fans and to people who are casual listeners, you know. And also, you know, it, it helps make the industry at large feel less redundant, less. Uh, um, you know, like there's, it helps bring new, new life to the music because um, if you remember like from last year, right? So people were saying like, oh, it doesn't feel like K-pop is going to be like really like all the same, whatever. Like, sure, maybe you listen to like nothing but big, big groups from big companies. Yeah, rarely ever does it truly get like that. Mm-hmm. There were some points last year where it kind of just felt like everything kind of meshed together. Mm-hmm. But it also depends. So like the extreme ends of like listening to music. It all, it'll always feel like that. If you're an extremely casual listener mm-hmm. that pretty much only listens to one genre, you'll feel like everything listen, everything sounds mm-hmm. the same. Yeah. But if you're also like us, where we're extremely high intake people, everything will kind of start to blend together a little bit. Yeah. And like yeah. last week's releases would kind of blend into this week's releases yeah. a little bit. Uh, I'm, I'm and so uh, you, could, uh, I'm going to use uh, some things you said earlier. You know, you've said Pentagon, you've said uh, this group, that mm-hmm. group, how it's, this has MCND Spring has sounded mm-hmm. similar. It, that that just comes from high end like consumption. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. We're not saying that it's absolutely like that, but uh, from, from. No, it's just showing yeah. similarities. Um, but, you know, it, it's when it comes to like the A tracks, it's usually company produced it's very rarely that you'll see uh, uh the members write those songs but if you look at the beat tracks there's a lot of songs that are actually not pushed as much but are produced by members and that's where like, the, yeah. a lot of the flavor comes right dude yeah, yeah the beat tracks is seriously like where a lot of the album is really lies in yeah. quality right. yeah. like I, I, a lot of people watch and listen to title tracks but like you're really a part of like that fandom if you go and listen to to the b-sides and you know the quality that the groups are going to produce oh, yeah. Absolutely. so um with uh mcnd spring it gets a very hard uh push from me i say it's oh watch the red after you know we need the view <laughs> well, that's what, that's why I said put this on pause, so that you can come back to it later. But uh, I'll go and check it, check it out. Yeah. Don't waste time. But you know, since we're talk- also talking about uh, artists who got their own music, should we go on to the next group? Oh my God! Yeah. So do it. Uh, he did it. <laughs> right. Right. Yes. Uh, 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 oh, right. I didn't catch it. It's fine. No, I didn't. But no, he he deliberately ignored it. So. Yeah, I'm sure you did. So take it away, Aura. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> G Idol uh, has just recently released "Oh My God," and "Oh My God," I just got it. I hate you guys. <laughs> oh. Uh, and th- so I mean, this song was—I believe this song was completely written by so- their leader so young herself too so mm-hmm. she tends to write a lot of their music yes uh, from what i've noticed yeah so um yeah this this song is it's definitely interesting mm-hmm. i i'm having a hard time saying that i like it 
Uh, and a lot of that is because it's the amount of similarities between this and the Lion. Lion. So I was about to say that too, because like, I feel like they kind of picked up where they left off with Lion, as far as like the yeah, musical so, concept. Yeah, so it's it's huh, it's not a Lion 2.0. It's a Lion Part Two. Yeah, and there is a very key difference there, but I think if they were making something like that, I I think this is in general poorly executed because i also feel like they kind of brought it a little bit back to like say han as well to some of the concepts with, with han um yeah I, I i honestly have a slightly different opinion because uh for me it, we, just the song it's just the song itself it kind of reminded me of the nightmare version from the song f- uh, in that they sang in uh queendom yeah that's what it kind of reminded me. So, so that's where Lion comes from, though. Lion comes from that nightmare version. Yeah. So, but I, so I feel like this is of that. I, I feel like this is closer to that than Lion. I think it's like two different aspects that the nightmare version kind of produced. You know. Well, they kind of had to mm-hmm. do that with Lion, though, because like otherwise it would be like we were, what we we're saying now, like where it'd be like version two point of the nightmare version of, of that song mm-hmm. from. Uh, yeah so so either which way these three songs um basically come from the same right. uh, come from the same cloth yeah. right um in my opinion definitely it was a poorly executed part two because it sounded too similar mm. it was very much in the same way for me when momoland released bam okay <laughs> yeah because Bam, was, if you listen to Boom Boom and you listen to Bam, yeah. it, they're different. Mm-hmm. But they're similar enough you can group them together. Right. And it's kind of the same thing here for Oh My God. I mean, even even the beat when they when they sang Oh My God mm-hmm. is the same as in Lion when they sang Ba Ba Ba, you know? Yeah. Okay. So there, there are far far too many similarities for me to give a, give a factual opinion almost. Okay. Because it's at this point, I mean, everything I would give it, I basically would give to Lion. Okay. And while I liked Lion, it Lion was a song for me that I couldn't listen to on repeat. No. It wasn't really that type of song. I I mean, I could give it listens, and that's fine. Right. But it was more it was more of a playlist song rather than a oh this is gonna go on repeat. Hmm. And this is song is very much the same way, in my opinion. Right. It's it's a song that, like, I'll throw on my playlist. I won't skip it if it comes on. But I find myself singing Lion halfway through the song. <laughs> I mean, even even uh, Shuha's entire second verse is actually the same verse with different lyrics that was in Lion. There's a slightly different beat. And I, I mean slightly, but it's a, it's actually the, probably the same piano synth they used. Okay. And uh, it's basically it's uh, transposed up instead of or transposed down. So I mean, I I find myself seeing the similarities too often when I listen to the song. Okay. Yeah. So for myself, like if you guys remember, I wasn't a fan of Lion. Um, this one. For oh my god, because I wasn't a fan of Lion, I didn't listen to it very much. Like I pretty much I was uh, that the one time I listened to it, for, um, and that was it. So I did I did get that that kind of uh, feeling of you know Lion again with oh my god, but I also got a little bit of a, um like from their earlier days with Han uh, to to that era. So that kind of which for me G Idol, um, Latata and Han, I was starting to get interest in G Idol at the time. Right. So you know. I guess that kind of puts it more, more positive for me because, like, for last year, um, the only thing I really liked that they released from last year was, um, gosh, what was it? Uh, um, what was that? What was that? Uh, uh, one that they produced in uh, San Francisco. I I know which um, one you're talking about. I don't remember the yeah because it it was a beat track to one to I believe Senorita. Um, yeah, it was like blow me up or blow blow, blow me away. Up. Blow me away, yeah. That's what it Blow was. me away. So that was the one that I did like last year. But I mean, obviously, I didn't really listen to it a whole lot last year. Um, mm-hmm. Everything else, 
I was not a fan of like Uh Oh and Senorita uh, Lion. So uh, for this, it kind of kind of starts bringing me back uh, into G Idol. You know, it, I didn't think it was bad, um, but it's not enough to really want to make me come back and do it again. So so for me, it's it's a Definitely little bit agree. different. Uh, I did like the song. Um, so uh, yeah. So I, I I I guess I'm the oddball. This is a bit of a reversal. Huh? This is a bit of a reversal. Usually you're usually you're the one that hates K-pop. I know, right? And I hate you guys. Thanks. <laughs> um, well, that never changes. <laughs> uh, That's true. But no, for me, I I actually did enjoy it because for me, I did like Lion. I liked the Nightmare version. Um, for me, I I enjoyed the concept because it was more of an like. Almost a fall from grace kind of thing. If if you're connecting it to Lion, it's a fall from grace kind of concept. Where, you know, in Lion, they, they were queen, queens. They were royalty. They were majestic. But with this, they've basically fallen from that grace. They've fallen into insanity. They've fallen into all of that. And you can see it from the dances in the background. You can see it from the costume choices. Mm-hmm makeup choices the hair designs it it it, yeah. it shows a fall from grace i think definitely um i think definitely a lot of the reason you like it is simply be, is is a lot of it is because you are focused on the mv probably and so you do notice those changes yeah. Yeah. like like how you're talking about you know the fall from grace um whereas like for example myself i'm more focused i'm pretty much all focused on the music right. mm-hmm. Yeah, for, I mean, for me, seeing how it plays out and then he, seeing how the song is connected to it, I think that, that that's that's why I say I'm a whole, a whole try to make it into a whole picture kind of thing. It's mm-hmm. for me it, that makes the song a little bit more enjoyable because that's the connection I can make and the understanding I can get from it. Uh, because I don't understand all the music terminology you guys talk about, right? Um. But then if you just connect it to like the nightmare version, it's just like of of this that they did on Queendom. Um, reason why I say nightmare version is because I still can't pronounce it in Korean and I still can't remember the translation. So I'm just calling it nightmare version. Uh, I honestly forgot which which uh, which song it was that they did, did the nightmare version of. So Yeah, it, it, I mean, originally it was a ballad, but it, it was good as nightmare version. Uh, but seeing them fall further into a sanity oh. and whatnot. What's up? Put it straight. Put it straight. That's what it was. Yeah. yeah. Uh, seeing them fall f- further into insanity, f- seeing them fall apart, seeing like the world turning black and white where it's l- mm-hmm. less color. There's not so much colors. It's 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 a world of ruin kind of thing, and that's something you would mm-hmm. see in an insane asylum kind of music video, uh, or in a movie. Um, it's just black and white. There's not much right. difference in it, and I think that's something that they've done really well. Um, it it's a very story driven. I feel at least in my opinion, I feel like it's a very like cinematic story driven music video. And I think that might be why, uh, musically, it may sound similar to Lion, um, is because they are very, cinematically, they are, could, could be very much similar in story, if you look at it that way. And that's, as far as that's why the the songs are so close. As far as, like, the music video, for myself, I thought it was more, um, more pleasant than Lion and their nightmare performance of uh, um, Pretty Straight from Queendom because I'm not a fan of like hor- horror themes, um, you know, or, or a lot of those like psychological horror type of uh, uh, of uh, uh, like themes that we see in, yeah. in those two performances. And this one is it's less the one that um, you know it because uh, like with with Latata and Han, I really like kind of like that the harder, edgier. Um, mm-hmm attitude right that they portrayed in there um and they weren't going so so deep into like this uh, uh psychological horror filled with terror and whatnot 
Yeah, I, I feel yeah, that really puts me off. I feel like um, yeah. that's something that So Yeon has been really getting into lately. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. Um, mm-hmm. she's definitely in the face with that. So, <laughs> like, it kind of reminds me of like um, gosh, you know, like I guess uh, uh you know, you know, like those people in, in, back in high school who are like, like super into like into that stuff, like you know. Uh, vampires and, and you know like terror and horror movies especially like slasher b horror movies you, yeah, you yeah. see yep. i ha- i have a problem with that relating to that because um while i was in high school it was still like around the twilight area era so when it came to like vampires and stuff people were like oh so the vampires well, and werewolves are so pretty um, okay, so 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 vampire werewolves aside, like the <laughs> like the terror or horror slash slasher type movies, mm-hmm. um, everything's black. Everything's black. If it's not black, then it's red. So right. that's what that's a lot of like the the feeling out I got out of like um, Lion and especially like Nightmare. Yeah, but, yeah. She's definitely been writing this kind of. She's she's definitely been been writing that um, creative train down that down that path. Yeah. So, but with this, I feel like she's kind of like starting. Get ready to transition out from that. So, um, I mean, she could I'm very well to see be. What going to be next. She she could very well be. You know, um, we, only time will will tell. Um, but yeah, cool. So, you guys want to uh, move it on? Yeah, because this next yeah. one's yeah. Um, let's go. Jihoon, let let's have you introduce this because uh, I feel like. Uh, someone in the group has something more to say and yep. we the two of us don't have much probably so winner they are back with a heart, heartfelt uh, comeback Rem- remember uh, the music video is already up to 15 million views it's been trending worldwide on iTunes oh has um, it absolutely yes okay so uh, it, it is a much more um lightly driven song um with a guitar accompaniment yeah uh with more heartfelt uh vocals so i mean okay yeah. like basics aside what were your, your like natural thoughts for the music vi- song video wise what what were your nat- like honest thoughts about it this song is all feels mm-hmm. it is all feels um not just the song the music video too because i mean the music video uh it was all about, you know, recapturing all the struggles and their achievements throughout um, their career, and not just their career, but alongside their fans. Uh, it's a love letter to their mm-hmm. fans. Yeah, it very much of a so. love letter. It, it very much felt like it's it, it it was snippets of their journey. It was snippets of their appreciation for their fans. At least that's what I got from it. Um, and I'm sure. That's what Jihoon meant uh, through thank you, uh, being, it being a thank you letter. Yeah, but, and the um, the lyrics w- was written by one of the members. Very, the song itself true. was co composed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it makes it more personal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that that those are mine and Jihoon's thoughts. But considering someone here is part of the inner circle, uh, uh, winners fandom. Uh, I feel like he would have more of a safe in this than we do. Yep. So, you know, this is, like you said, this is winners. Um, this is definitely like a thank you to the fans, but this is also a, oh, this is rough. This is also a see you soon. Mm-hmm. Yes. Winner will not be like, winner will not be releasing songs as a group again until 2025 oh is it conscription winner yeah winner has said that they will not release songs as a three-member group Uh, and so they're gonna wait for everyone to be done with conscription before they make music again yeah it's like a um like with big bang like you had to take that long hiatus and so this is winner's like this is winners. We'll see you again. We're not done. We promise we'll be back. This is why they're asking winners. Why they're asking everyone to remember winner. Mm. 
is because they winner doesn't want to lose their fandom while they're while they can't make music right that being said winner has already said that they will have solo member promotions mm-hmm. so they'll have solo promotions for members that are you know as they're getting in and out right but winner as a group will not be making music again until they're all done with conscription yeah okay. which is the same thing that uh big bang had, um, had done as well with individual members. yeah so. right um so it's that's kind of where this this whole thing is coming from it is kind of in the same sense of thank you to their fans Mm -hmm. but it's more it's like i said it's more of a we'll see you soon Mm -hmm. kind of parting song Mm because this is more than likely winner's last if not one of the last songs that they will produce until they're done in 2025 one member's already signed up this year another one might sign up this year okay Uh, yeah the sooner they get it done the better yeah 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 i mean um i it's it it make definitely makes a song a little bit sadder knowing that um mm -hmm. yeah uh without without inner circles knowing um a bunch of fandoms went on twitter it was blowing up all over my timeline a bunch of fandoms went on twitter there was armies there was elves there was um i mean even aces fandom participated so choice was there um once's were there everyone literally was there just supporting inner circles on twitter because the thing the thing about inner circles is inner circles has always been that fandom that never started anything they never wanted to there was no point mm-hmm. to um and when people attacked them they just didn't respond which is the best thing to do because there was no need to yeah um uh, obviously some people in the fandom did right. but you can't control everyone but as, as the fandom as a whole we, they didn't respond they didn't care all they did was want to support winner and so um and so like a lot of fandoms are really grateful for that right and so they all kind of are helping inner circles go through it but yeah that is um that's kind of the the basis of the song yep. that's why it does it's i think a lot of their the hidden direction in the song so a lot of it seems to be directed towards one individual but it's it's really just directed towards the fandom and really like saying thank you. Okay. Yeah, I mean, like th- that really just adds to you know all the more reason to check it out. Um, you know, it's it's just nothing but feels. And if you, especially with, with with times like these, you know, if you just want to get get caught up into some uh, into some you know uh, something lovely, you know, such as this, like get involved. Yeah, like, get involved with this. This is this is super wholesome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people were, uh, they didn't really provide a solid explanation when they released the song and why it was directed towards the fandom. So it's, uh, I will say that it was pretty unfortunate because a lot of the fandom thought they were disbanding at first. Yeah. Which is the first thing I thought of, like, as I was listening to it, like, wow, this is so like, yeah. Like you literally asked me before recording, you were like, are they disbanding? Yeah. I was like, well, we'll talk about it. So, so, but yeah, so they're not disbanding and winner usually holds pretty well on their promises when they said they would push through everything and make two t- two comebacks a year they did it yeah you know and so when they said that like we are going to make music again in 2025 i mean there's no reason not to believe them mm-hmm. we'll see them then um and only hope that they've grown bigger since then yeah you know for me what really makes this whole thing beautiful too is just uh all the fandoms coming together for for this, um, mm-hmm. and especially with, with the way Intercircles con- have conducted themselves, keep um, you know basically keeping out of trouble, not starting anything, not uh, letting other other toxic parts of certain fandoms pull them into into drama and whatnot. Um, this that's really the best way, right. you know, to be conducting yourselves, and like this whole togetherness, you know, I find that very beautiful. Yeah, and really. Mm-hmm. I think I think that's something that everybody uh, should let themselves you know fall into you know get involved with that with that with togetherness. Yeah. So. Uh man. So so <laughs> that that that, that was a definite uh, serious moment. 
Yeah, um, yeah you know, it's, yeah, it's great. Yeah. I mean, you know, we're writing these together, so. Yeah. You know, with Winners Remember, um, the song itself is very, is very beautiful. Uh, it is. You know, our, I, I pulled into it from the, from the get-go. Um, very minimalist on the musical complement, and it doesn't need to be much more than that. It's perfectly fine as it is. Very much the um, same with the video itself. Um, like, it's not very complex, but the amount of work that was done to make it into almost a, a video photo album, it, a video diary, that, that's probably the better term for this, yeah. um, makes it work so much better. Yep. Agreed. So. Yeah. You know, with, with it, with it, you know, it's all, it's all in the emotion. Everything, everything that, everything for the song. Uh, everything that makes the song what it is is all in the emotion, mm-hmm. um, the emotion that uh, the, all the love that's put into composing it, um, the lyrics, the delivery, uh, is what makes the song. And really, really, uh, it's a it's a very beautiful song. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, does so, anyone have anything else to say about it before we start repeating ourselves? Yeah. Man, Stan Winner. <laughs> yes. Go listen. Go listen to remember. Definitely go listen to their their older songs too. Their older songs are really great. Yeah. Yes, because I'm really excited to get on to the to the next one as well. So, me too. You, are, you're going. Are you going to write it, sign off on it? Nobody got it. Uh, yeah. Nobody uh, got it. I. I see. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> I was trying to figure out how I'm going to react to that. So. <laughs> yeah. Same. Uh, bad dad. <laughs> joke. Bad dad. No, he got you. You guys. You got us pretty good. Thank you for that. So, I'm proud of they you. are back with their signature sound. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> uh, this is Signature's Awesome. Okay, so, <laughs> uh, now, that, now, that, now that I've recovered from that one two, uh, one, two hit with the dad one, jokes. One-two bunch? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These guys. Hey, it's called <laughs> Payback. Yes. So, Signature with Asa. Um, I've been waiting this whole week to talk about this because I loved it. The, this like, was what released the day after we recorded our other episode. Yes, yes. So mm-hmm. literally waited this whole week, and and I was actually up for it the entire time. Like I waited for this. I saw it when it was at like thirty views. Yeah, I was here. Wow! So you were you were there right, right at, at thirty views. Yeah. Hell yeah! I'm surprised. I ha- I had to wait. I'm so for proud it. of you. There was no way I was missing that. I'm so proud of you, man. All right. I was there six hours later. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I think I was like fourteen hours later on that one. So, anyways, the song the song itself, um, you know, so signature as as a group from their other uh from their debut has really been providing a lot of what I've been wanting um out of K-pop recently um, especially for as this year started so they're they're bringing back some of that that uh funky pop fresh yeah uh, fun you know that we that really got me to falling in love with like twice and itsy right mm-hmm. um saturday and, and you know a lot of these other groups have been kind of shifting more towards the mature direction or the uh, crushier direction right so here we got Signature is holding it down, and I love it. Um, and can I say the duality at the beginning was hilarious because you have this kind of like kind of rocky kind of vibe, yeah, with with the with the kind of bass guitar, yeah, the, the blues, with and that then blues, blues rock, yeah, and then G One opens up the in- the song, <laughs> like <laughs> you can't not smile at G One, literally. She, she she's my she's my bias from from the group. Like she's my bias from even back way back when. So. Yeah, and I mean she's my bias wrecker, so like that you can't not smile at G One. Yeah, she's awesome. Like it's it's actually impossible. Yeah. You know, the um the song itself, right? It's you're gonna you're gonna get kind of feeling of, of like a, um some of that itsiness with that with that kind of going everywhere, right? Mm-hmm. But a little bit, yeah. That kind of going everywhere, but that but uh, uh keeping it together. You, you, you do a really good job keeping keeping it all together, packaged well. Um, that you got that blue, that blues rock riff in there. Um, you kind of have that sample going throughout the song. Uh, I love that, but then at the same time, just to keep it 
in the in the pop realm, that fun pop realm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really like also how how well the members play off each other in um in the video as well, and also in the song. They they transition because their voice types are are relatively similar. Right. They transition really well between each mm-hmm. other. And um, I mean, even even the most harsh transition in that is pretty much any pretty much anyone into Viva or Sun now as she's named, um, because she has more of a um, I don't even know how to put it a more sassy kind of sound. Sassy, but the rest of the group doesn't. Yep. You okay. know. Um, and even that they still transition very well between between all everyone and that's really hard to do as a group make those seamless transitions yeah another thing that's that's their um a part of their signature style now um because we've heard it from Nuni Nana, with is a uh, um yeah. a lot of those uh ad-lib chants mm-hmm. um because we hear that so for for twice is like uh older stuff right with like you know likey and uh knock knock they have a lot of those like yeah <laughs> uh-huh you know th- th- those those fun sounds thrown th- dispersed throughout the track right and so it helps kind of drive that that fun that fun <laughs> feeling that uplift uplifting feeling throughout the song and um that's that's very much a signature of you know uh these fun pop songs so and I, there's no other word i can really use besides that so <laughs> i know yeah. I, I i've laughed twice because you keep on saying signature uh yeah. so I, I i'm still going to admit very similar to MCND. I don't know the members' names. I feel bad. Uh, like, you you guys will mention the names. I will not smile and nod like I know who you're talking about, but I don't. Well, that's because Nick and I had a head start from Good Day. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we had a really long head start. <laughs> yeah, like a couple years head start. Three years head start. Yeah. yeah. Four years. And so, I mean, so. we know quite a few of the members inside of here. And, I mean, I even know, like... Semi now. Uh, She's like a new addition. Yeah, I even know Semi now. Yeah. And you got... So, I mean... It's... Uh, it's, it's yeah. I mean, it, it, it is what it is, but I will say that I did enjoy the song. Um, I, I, I like how very consistent everything was. Everything mixed very well. And even if it w- like was supposed to be a contrast, that contrast did mix in very well that it was really natural, I felt like. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because he used what three, three or four different uh, sets throughout the music video with uh, different costumes. I think so. So, well, and... it, it was. It seemed like it was all in the same set, just different sections of that set. Um, because you could very much tell that they were really close in the same area. Oh yeah, because like they had the same arch that they used in, in other scene, in certain scenes, but they changed the backdrop to the arch. Right, right. So, and that's where like they would change. Well, no, no, like, I, I, I meant way. like. Like, they'd be standing in one area, they'd film that one area, and then just kind of pull it back down so it looks like that they stepped up and down from the area kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, because, like, you're using the kind of, you're filming within the same yeah. area, so you can only do so much to create a whole new scene. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, but, the, uh, man. They're, they're, this fun image that they got going on too, I love it. Yeah. I love all of it. I mean, they really utilized the... Uh, special effects and all of that really well. The set without the overdoing it. Exactly. Yeah. One th- one thing that I also noticed that uh, they can do because a lot of them came from Good Day. Mm-hmm. Usually groups want to make members stand out. Mm-hmm. Uh, and usually the best way to do that is hair color. Yeah. Um, because you know you can learn them based on hair color, and then you can learn their faces and blah 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 blah. But because a lot of them came from Good Day, they can do a consistent hair color comeback like this. Like they were all black hair, yeah. And it doesn't matter. Yeah, because like uh, um, like from their previous like with Nuna, they all they all had like more uh like orangey brown uh hair color in that video, and now they got mm-hmm. here they're back with like black and like a dark brown. So, right. Yeah. G one looks so different. Like I almost didn't recognize it. And I oh loved it. my yes. I was like, I was like, who is this girl? Yeah, they like, had a new member on us. Like, oh no, it's you on. Hey. So, but she looks also looks so different when she's not smiling. <laughs> yeah, I know. 
she like he's she's different very person. Very different, and I, I love what you're doing. So their and their label is doing such a good job with the productions for this. Mm-hmm. They did. They did suit like. J9 is doing very well with um with managing like all of that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um and honestly as a first group subsidiary label like this is by this is much more than I I'd ever expect. Like when I heard they were going to a created subsidiary for them. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be honest, I was a little skeptical. I was like, how is this going to end? Are they going to know how to manage groups? Managing girl groups are notoriously difficult. Mm-hmm. Like, do they know what they're doing? But, you know, they really showed me up. They they kind of told me they know what they're doing. And, you know, you know, this is, this is one of those things where it's like, I'm glad you proved me wrong. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for proving like, me wrong. Like, thank you for proving me wrong. Yeah. Because, honestly, I was really, really skeptical. Yeah. Um, Especially because C9, in general wasn't the greatest at managing good day no they had they, had um, they, they weren't horrendous it wasn't pletus <laughs> yeah. yeah but it was not good yeah. uh... <laughs> um so i mean as far as that goes you know the, yeah they had what i think one maybe two releases really play and then the group kind of just went on survival shows yep. to hopefully get their name known was on and the then unit. never came back and then yep. that was it and i mean even didn't one only one only one of the members made it to the end right i don't yeah, remember yeah uh, g1 did yeah so. I, I couldn't remember if eva did or but no. she didn't get picked up for the final um, group so right i cried for her um i was reading i was reading so hard for her too when it comes to survival, and so should like, we always root for everyone. Yeah, true, true. <laughs> true. Uh, so like, as far as that goes, um, I so like, C nine didn't do the greatest, and so I was really skeptical. And yeah, I'm really happy that it seems J nine is managing this correctly. Um, we'll have to see as time goes on. Mm-hmm. J nine's not out of the water yet. Nope. And quite frankly, um. You know, comparatively to uh, the MV views that uh, the YouTube MV views that Good Day got, they're pretty comparable. Yes. So it's going to take a little minute. It's going to take a minute to see what J9 does differently that C9 couldn't do. Because it seems that they're mostly independent. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, it's really got me excited, too, for, for seeing what they're going to come back with next. Because mm-hmm. here, so yeah. with it, with Asa, it's it's a um it's their lead single B, and what you mean by that is, it's, a, it, it it pairs with their with their debut um with their other uh, with Nina yeah. Nana. So, well, because they they do they're kind of two different things, right? Where or two different with uh, Nina Nana, it's more it's much more more <laughs> more brighter cutesy. This one is kind of more attitude. Um, they're kind of edgier, but you're still both fun. So yeah. that's yes. kind of like what ties it all together so, is that funness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so basically, <clears throat> this so this is their debut lead, lead single B. Nunanana was their debut lead single A, but both of them are combined into their debut. Yep. This is now now as of the release of Asa, the group is officially fully debuted. Yes. Okay. Originally, when Nunanana came out, they were only partially debuted. Yep. Because they needed that second debut single. Okay. So, I because I, I know a lot of people were confused when when the debut lead single B was announced. <laughs> right. That is how that works. They are now officially a full group. So their actual technical debut date is April fifth, twenty twenty. All right. And and the whole point was because you know they want to show off that they can be fun and cute, but at the same time mm-hmm. they're showing off now that they can be fun but also like a little bit edgier with more hot attitude it's still cute yeah so. oh yeah yeah 100 yeah. i mean come on you have you g1 have in the group g1, yeah <laughs> you, there's no way you're gonna make like uh, a girl crush concept with that yeah. like i'm all sorry right, so, but so um, it, it's for, it's showing off all the groups so i love it all right um so before this gets any longer than it needs to be um talking about how fun signature is 
Should we choose? And how much we love them? <laughs> yes, how much we love them. Uh, should we start choosing our MV of the week? Yep. So go for it, Aura. Okay. Thanks. Yep. All you, Aura. I will have to go with. Um, shoot. Have you guys picked yours yet? <laughs> I have. Okay. I have not. Nick, you choose. Because. Mine was pretty instantaneous choice. Mm-hmm. It's definitely winners remember. Yep. yep. I the song is way too sentimental to me to not um not choose that for this week, month, year, decade, all of it. Alright. I'm so I'm super, super, super torn. Because yeah, between M C and D winner and signature. I have a hard time picking between all three of those. I love all three of those songs, and for very different reasons. I, I guess I'll go with MCND. Spring. It, it it wasn't complicated, but it was good. It was it, it was good. So, that makes it easy for me then, because now the way I can go off of this is Nick already chose winner for, on my behalf. Aura already chose MCND on my behalf, so I can go with Signature and Asa. Uh, nice. All right. Chihu is just being cheap. Uh. Absolutely. <laughs> I, will, I, will, I, will, I will cheat as much as I can to be cheap. Uh, so. Time to let Jihoon go first. Right. <laughs> right. All right. Well, uh, you, think it, you guys think it's about time to move on to yeah. the Yeah, Absolutely. Go for it, bro. Oh yeah, I am first time. Uh, <laughs> I got it. I got it. I was prepared. I was prepared. I swear. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Wanho from Monster X. Well, formerly from Monster X. Um, he has signed with uh, a new agency, Highland Entertainment, as a solo artist, and has launched his social media mm-hmm. accounts. Um, there was about a big bunch of controversy around Wanho. Not gonna get into it because it would take forever. But basically, he's been cleared of all that controversy, and so now he is free to start his career. Yeah. Um, he launched his official Instagram as well as his official Twitter, and um, they said uh, Highland Entertainment posted that they had ex- they had signed an exclusive contract with mm-hmm. him, so there will be no shade- shared agency inside of this contract, um, and he will be promoting as a solo artist and producer. Yeah. I mean, another thing about this is that Highline is a subsidiary of Starship, so... Um, Ooh, right. Yeah. So, it's not like he's completely, like, from Starship, but he's part of a subsidiary. Very much similar to Black Label to YG. Yep. So, uh, Highline Entertainment is usually a kind of exclusive label. mm mm-hmm. um, they really only sign certain people that are very, very well known or very, very capable. Um, the ho- artist they house currently is like DJ Soda, Dress, Pluma, um, which so naturally it makes sense he'd be working as a producer as well. So, a lot to expect from him. Definitely want to see more in the All future. Right. Well, yes. Now we got so. Jihoon. Mama Moo, Solar, she has announced her first solo album. Uh, teaser just dropped, and that uh, album is set to be a release on the 23rd of April, Korean Standard Time. So, yes. looking forward to it. So I excited. Mama, I love Mama Moo. My Moo. bias. Solar, so Solar, uh, yeah, she was my first bias from the group. So, And now, yes, my bias. I, I can't say I really have a bias because they're all my bias records at this point. Honestly, I'm, I, honestly, I'm getting there. You need to be. I'm like I'm like starting to get you there. Need to be. Right like, now, just, right, just, now just right now I'm on Moonbeal. Right now I'm on Moonbeal. Yeah, I've sh- I I think I've shifted like bias records so many times that they've all just become my bias yeah. record. And yeah. <laughs> so I mean don't know what to do at this point, you know, just go with it. So right. Yeah, you just run right. with it, call it a day. Right. So on to Aura. So for anyone who knows me, I am a once and who knows Ji Hoon who uh we met as once is. Um yep. Twice is going to have a YouTube documentary coming up around the end of April called 
uh, sees the light. And it's going to be about Twice's uh, journey, their feelings, and basically everything that they've gone through during the Twice Lights concert. <coughs> and I'm so excited. I am absolutely excited about this. But there's another piece of news that is very much related to this that I'm just as much as excited. Oh my god. Um, Naughty. Uh, someone who competed on 16 with Twice, who competed on Idol School with uh, Filmus 9. She has just recently signed with, I want to say, it wasn't Stone Entertainment. It was, it started with an S. But she signed. Yes, she's finally she, signed. Yeah, she is. She is once again signed, um, to the same a subsidiary Swing, Swing Entertainment. That's what it was, a subsidiary of CJ and M Entertainment, which has signed like, um, IOI. Uh, uh, uh shoot, <laughs> I'm forgetting almost X one um. Yep, one on one and yeah. Yeah. one. Well, I don't know why I was forgetting all of that. My bad. Because you were so caught up in the excitement, so that's forgiven, right? We've been because like we've been keeping like a lot of people have been keeping track of her right for the past how many years now? Yeah, you're know, wondering like, hey, uh, when is she going to debut? Yes. Yeah, since sixteen, so that's yeah. five years. Yeah, and you know we got to see some teasers of, of her because she performed at uh, KCON, uh Thailand, uh, Thailand, right. Uh, last year, yep. mm-hmm. so we were like, "Oh my god!" You know, she's she's she, you know we're seeing her perform you know publicly. Yeah, you know, like you're like this is me. Like she's about to like debut soon or whatever. Yeah, like, is she going to sign with someone? Yeah, uh, uh, so, but yeah, signing with Swing Entertainment. They at least from what they've said that she will be debuting. Um, I don't know if it. I don't think that they've announced it whether it was a solo artist or not. But I'm going to guess so. I don't know if she's gonna be be in a group but i believe she might be a solo artist don't take my word for it for that um but she is signed to a swing so i mean she probably had the skill set skill set for her, a solo debut because like we saw her we knew that she was a prolific dancer from 16. oh yeah but then we also got to see that she was good at, yep. at uh, she became really good at vocalize you know at vocals in idol school yeah um, and she's very much improved in between so i can't wait to see like how much she's improved even more after that yes yes yep. so excited so i think it's uh i think this is a great note to, to wrap this episode on so. all righty thank you for watching this has been idol stand nation make sure you like comment subscribe click that bell icon if you want to see when we upload in the future don't forget to join our discord we talk there all the time uh we have a twitter make sure you go follow us that's where we post our videos as well and we will see you in the next one Bye. bye